what's happening crypto fam happy happy friday good morning and welcome back to love for crypto i'm scott it's a pleasure to have you here i appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content so thank you still a bit sniffled up and coffee <coughs> like that so apologies apologies if you have any coughing fits or anything you'll just have to laugh at me big big good comment there Too hot. Ah, my Bank of America are finally flashing, finally flashing the goods. <laughs> They're finally literally in the open. They're bullish on digital assets. It's only the beginning. There's much more to come. How many people are holding and blah, blah, blah. And they've done a couple of reports. So let's bear in mind they probably only asked about 20 people and then scaled it up. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, what I feel they would have done is gone to exchanges and used the KYC to see who's buying crypto, who's holding crypto, the age ranges, the jobs. So again, some people could have lied to Coinbase about what they what they earn a year, um, what they actually work as, blah blah blah. Let's have a little read about these um, surveys and um, reports that have been done the bank of america is bullish on digital assets it believes bitcoin is only at the beginning the market capitalization of digital assets now sitting over two trillion dollars surpasses the gdp of many countries it is a blossoming asset class that has become too large to ignore according to a bank of america report interesting so the Bank of America has officially launched its cryptocurrency research division with a new 140-page report titled Digital Assets Primer. Only the first inning. If you're not familiar with innings, in like cricket, it's like the first innings, the first round. Yeah, the first round to come. And the first innings... That covers Bitcoin, NFTs, DeFi, central bank digital currencies, and more. Led by Al Keshar, head of global cryptocurrency and digital asset strategy. The report reveals that 221 million people have purchased or sold cryptocurrencies of June 2021, up from 66 million in May 2020. It's difficult to overstate our transformative blockchain technology, digital assets, and the thousands of decentralized apps that have yet to be created could potentially be, the report states, going beyond Bitcoin. Up until today, Bank of America's attention was primarily focused on Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures trading. However, its new report suggests that the bank is looking into all aspects of the digital assets industry. Digital assets that enable a platform to be built, like the Apple iPhone did for applications. Are gaining, they're gaining the most value. The top three, Ether, Cardano and Binance Coin. The report also cites the increasing relevance of stable coins and the potential of CBDCs. The top six stable coins by market capitalization have reached a combined value of 115 billion dollars and settled 2.8 trillion dollars of transactions in the first half of 2021 i want to say that again right the top six stable coins that's it no one no obviously the peg to something the tr the trading into something but the top six six The top six by market capitalization have reached a combined value of $115 billion. So six stable coins now worth $115 billion combined by market cap. And together have settled $2.8 trillion of transactions in the first half of 2021. Not like, a, not like last year. A fucking... In the first half of this year. So the worry amongst policymakers is that the private stable coins could create systemic risk if there was ever a bank run type situation. According to the report, it would force the issuers to liquidate their collateral. 
and cause contagion effects in traditional financial markets. Some issuers, notably Teva Limited, hold commercial paper in order to generate a yield on reserves. And if they grew too large, sudden redemption demand might prompt them to try to liquidate their commercial paper holdings, which could have massive ramifications in the corporate bond market. Oh dear, who gives a shit? The CBDCs, it's when, not if. According to the report, the bank believes that CBDCs are a question of when, not if. Governments and regulators probably have stepped up efforts to limit usage of digital assets. The adoption and use have increased. Some of the key issues that governments and regulators appear to be focused on revolve around anti-money laundering and know your customer, also known as AML and KYC. Mitigating potential bank runs, taxation and liability. A central bank issued managed CBDC would address these issues by main, while maintaining central bank monetary policy control, according to the report. Bank of America has also kept their eye on non-fungible tokens. While they do credit the current methods of utilisation for art and gaming in the research piece, they also recognise other potential use cases. NFTs can be used instead of deeds, titles, or anything currently needed to demonstrate ownership. And all without a middleman charging a fee, company report stated. Referring to the focus of NFTs in the report, Anto Parolian, 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 I don't know. Well, Chief Operating Officer at Crypto Digital Assets Hedge Fund, Act 36 said the most interesting thing to note is that their report explicitly mentions NFTs as one of the current drivers of the digital asset market. It continued, although there are many voices dismissive of the NFT ecosystem as just another bubble, non-fungible tokens are already a massive economy. The Bank of America seems to be well aware that NFTs disruptive potential will spill over to other industries and extend well beyond the current bull market. How long have we been trying to tell people it's all going to be about smart contracts? Once to get the payments out of the way, said this, once the banks get the payments sorted, it is all about the smart contracts and, and everything of contract. Picture an agreement, picture an agreement, picture a fucking agreement or a certificate or anything of ownership, contractual, anything. Picture it. It's going on a smart contract. It is. It just is. Within 20 years, it's on a smart contract. I don't give a fuck what kind of certificate it is. Birth certificate, death certificate, marriage certificate, house deed, tenantship, tenants agreement, landlord's agreement, fucking financial car, lease of a car, lease of a house, uh, fucking subscription to Volkswagen mobility as a service, fucking McDonald's all you can eat till 10 a.m., Fucking, it's all going on smart contracts. Anything you can fucking think of. Anything you can fucking think of. Your receipt will be a smart contract. Anything, fucking anything, mate. This fucking book. See, what's going to be gone in the end? I mean, is not even got a fucking barcode to begin with because it's not for sale. It gets given away in a college. But, um, even that in the future... You're looking at it having a QR code somewhere. Um, everything. Everything. Um, I'm not done here on this article. The DeFi threat. I'll, I'll tell you what, the DeFi threat. I only see DeFi as a threat to one kind of person. And it's a, it's a person that owns a bank. Other than that, it ain't a threat to anyone. It's actually a relief. Yeah, De decentralized finance, owning your own value, getting rewards of staking your value. Instead of you putting money in a bank and a bank getting rewards of your money and giving you minimal interest, absolute dog shit. Decentralized finance is throwing rewards back at you. I'm not surprised these motherfuckers are scared of that, mate. 
Perhaps the greatest threat to the Bank of America's business model is decentralized finance, DeFi, where users can carry out many of the functions of a traditional bank, such as borrowing, lending, earning, attractive yields, and many other activities. Contrary to expectations of apprehension towards embracing DeFi, the report sounds optimistic about its future. Well, you could be optimistic about its future if your bank stops being a twat and horrible bastards and whatever terminology you want to use, scumbags, scammer, lies and thieves, whatever you want to call them. Stop doing it, banks, and we might trust you as much as we trust DeFi. The SEC is investigating DeFi applications and companies to determine if and how they should bring them into the current regulatory framework. We are optimistic about the long-term growth of this segment as it matures and regulatory uncertainty is clarified. I mean, America's just shut the fucking door on it, mate. It's just shut the door legitimately. The SEC are just like, we need to control this as much as we can. We've got to burn as many people as we can, just scare people away from it. This DeFi is going to crush us. And it's all, it's all because they're all in bed with each other. So throughout the report, the Bank of America stresses that the main headwind for growth in near term is regulatory risk. But they also state that in the long run, clarity from regulators will allow new entrants to participate in the emerging asset class. Fucking madness. Just get it fucking done. Most of the world doesn't really give a shit what America do. They don't. It's when the media come out with a fear-mongering on global economics and all this trade war shit. That's when they start getting the fucking zombies scared. But if it wasn't on the news about the SEC or trade wars or anything, Trump, Biden, fucking none of it was there. No one would give a shit. They wouldn't give a shit what the SEC and fucking Bank of America and fucking... All the rest of them were doing. No one would give a fuck. And because the media just rubbing it in people's faces. They give a shit. <sighs> the Bank of America's report actually believes that one third of the United States will use crypto in 2022. Bank of America's released an 140 page report. Covering the digital assets industry, including NFTs, institutional investments, and the rates of growth. According to the report, the industry is still young and has great potential for future growth. Excuse me. Excuse me. 27% of the United States population will use cryptocurrencies. According to the research, currently 14% of the U.S. population holds cryptocurrencies. The percentage translates as 21 million individuals who use cryptocurrencies as financial holdings, payments, tools, and more. The average crypto holder is Caucasian male, 38 years old, and he's him. <laughs> oh, mate. Sorry. Sorry, I lost it. I got, I got the... Where did that go then? The average crypto holder is apparently a Caucasian male. He's 38 years old, and he makes approximately $111,000 per year. Well... I'm Caucasian male, I'm 38 years old in 6 months, 7, 8 months, and I fucking wish I was on 111 grand, most of us, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, I don't think I'm on that a decade, <laughs> I don't even think I've earned that fucking working in the <laughs> shit the bed mate. So the youngest and oldest age groups apparently represented are 18 to 24 and 55 to 65. Even though the cryptocurrency industry is considered modern, the youngest representatives of the industry are actually the minority. Well, massive adoption creates institutional interest. According to data provided by Coinbase, the portion of institutional investors on the platform has increased by 67%, while the number of retail investors rose by only 34%. While representing only 1% of Coinbase's population, institutions hold 50% of platform assets and comp... Oh, my days. Now, we need to understand that the institution is mainly holding it for other people, but they will have their own, and, and, and it just goes to show the lack of people holding their own shit. Because... On Coinbase, 
1% of Coinbase's population is institutions, of which are holding 50% of platform assets and contributing to 64% of the volume. Now, you know, like they say, what is hard in the world, what the 1% one, 1 owns fucking over half the value. Well, there it is on Coinbase as well. The 1% own over half the value, mate. Already. Already. In Q4 2020, institutional users traded 57 billion. While a year ago, institutional volume was only at 9 billion. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Additional reports and conclusion. The bank's document also covers various market and on-chain data, like the number of large transactions, the sentiment of holders, and Ethereum's development rates. Experts also pointed out the legal usage of Bitcoin is significantly dropping. Compared to 2012, Bitcoin transactions tied to illegal sources have dropped down almost 40% to not to uh, for, to not to one percent. So it's between not and one percent of Bitcoin transactions is now on illegal sources. Um, where's this fucking report? Manage cookie? Reject the cookie? Fuck your cookie! Right, we're gonna we're gonna drop that in as well because that that that's um the Bank of America Securities Global Research. I think that's like the first page of the report so i'll whack that in the doodad as well and let me know what you think in the comments guys because I, I just think it's fucking laughable that they're finally coming out and saying shit we've been saying since 2017 and 2018 the fact that this tech is the future can change the world and anyone sleeping on it is just a fucking idiot it was a no-brainer you didn't need to know how deep it was going to go NFT wise, metaverse, fucking smart contracts and all that. You just, we, but we knew it was coming. The per second payments and shit, like pay, paying as, as you do it, that's coming still. And they'll be talking about that in 2025 as if it's a new idea. I'm fucking telling you now. They'll be like, oh, we've got this idea where you're just going to pay for things as you use it. I've been doing that on Coil since 2020. You know what I mean? Pay for Netflix as you watch it. Pay for Sky as you watch it. Pay for your fucking car as you drive it. Should you be paying road tax on your car while your car's on your drive? And what if your car's on your drive for over a month and don't touch the fucking road? Should you pay car tax? I don't believe you should. I'm not even sure you should be paying fucking insurance if your car's not on the road. Just a basic insurance in case it gets nicked. Know what I'm saying? It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. We've all got them little meters now telling us how much power we're using per minute or per hour or whatever. And eventually you'll be knowing per second, per minute, and it being paid for by the devices and appliances. It's coming, guys. So what do we do to prepare? We invest in ourselves and the internet of value. Live long and oddly, and we never let it go. We get it staked, get it baked, and wait. Simple. Patience. Patience is key. Yeah? So enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We love crypto. We love the internet of value. And we love you. you. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you on the next one. Peace, guys. Much love. Mwah.